Hello YouTube and welcome to a very special travel log featuring myself, Stu, as I went to Belfast back in January for a very important ice hockey game. So whilst I was there, I decided to film a little beer blog of all the pubs I visited and all the beers I drank. So here I am in McHugh's trying a Belfast lager. McHugh's had a lot of different beers on tap, which was great to see, and their pints were as good as their food. It was great. Second day, we got to go on the Game of Thrones studio tour, which was amazing. We got to hold swords, we found a bar that sold Guinness. Well, it was Belfast, of course, there's Guinness everywhere. And it was a lovely pint of Guinness. You've got to have one. Then back in town, we fired to Bootleggers, which is this really awesome pub that had a great tap selection, uh, but it was full. So we had to grab a cocktail and a pint and sit outside and enjoy them. Here's me trying the Open Gate Citra IPA from Guinness. And yeah, a wee sip of the cocktail whilst we were there. And yeah, we spent our afternoon uh, catching a shiny Pokemon for our kids. And on this occasion, it was a Rowlet. From there, we hustled over to the SSE Belfast Arena, we had a Five Guys, we had the Heineken, and we were getting ready to take our seats for what would be one hell of an ice hockey game. As you can see there, Arena is massive, it holds over 10,000 seats, and I think we maybe only occupied 100. So yes, quick Heineken Zero before the hockey kicked in. So things got flashy really quick. The Belfast Giants definitely had a budget behind them. And uh, the, the boys had some talent too. As we quickly found out uh, by the second period where they were up 3-0 against the Flyers. But by the end of that second period, we got our first goal. It was proper on the edge of your seat stuff. Every time the Flyers scored, we were ecstatic, but the Giants always scored shortly after. And then... It happened. The Flyers won on the shootout. And the away section went wild. So cut to the mass exit. And then back to the apartment for two beers. I'd bought some beers at the local spa and realised I couldn't take them home with me. So here's me trying a boundary Pillows Pale Ale, which was delicious. Like the thick, creamy beer, ice cold. It was amazing. Following that, I had the White Hags Undead Insides Forest Fruit Ale. Now, this appearance will give off big sour vibes, but it was strangely better and possibly uh, not for me. But I'm not upset, I was happy to try a uh, new interest in Irish craft beers before going out on the sesh later that night. Here we are, back at McHugh's. I saw that they had hen, cock and pigeon rock on a cask. And I was dying to try that before we left. So here's me having this lovely, not warm red ale, but it was still quite pleasant. Onto the second bar, Muriel's Cafe Bar, and they had some uh, very interesting uh, decorations. At first we just assumed it's still kind of Christmas, this is the first week of January, they left the decorations up, but when you get a closer look at those decorations, it 
chainsaw bras and pants. Turns out the Muriel's Cafe used to be a brothel before it was a bar. I was drinking the Dublin Lager from Five Lamps, which, um, you know, it was fine. It was a cold beer on tap and it kept me going before we headed to the next spot, which is called The Spaniard. Strange thing about The Spaniard, it seems like it was all outside. It was all underneath big canopies, some decking and uh, what you'll soon see, a very big tent. So we spotted the White Water Bruins formidable IPA called Maggie's Leap. So I grabbed a half pint of that. My friends had the Outsider Cider. So here we are, outside in the big tent with our beer, with our cider, drinking away. And turns out there's a cool little gimmick with this big tent. Tucked in the back corner of that tent turns out to be this very cool New York style little pizzeria thing just called Have a Slice Day. These guys were dishing out just big New York style slices of pizza, which was very much needed at this point of the night. I think we were hitting midnight here. That's an armored police car. Yes, so I say what I see, and here we are in the Thirsty Goat, which had some cool things going for it. They had their own house IPA, as well as this great band playing Bad Moon Rising. So we decided to stay here for a couple drinks. Here I am trying the unpronounceable pure Irish lager, which I have uh, no memory of and took me a while to figure out what the hell I was actually drinking like a couple weeks later when looking back on this footage but here I am with the Thirsty Goat IPA I was very glad to try this here I am showing off for the camera making an absolute totty of myself and some well deserved indigestion and yeah it must be good because I got the two thumbs up on the scale Next up was the Dirty Onion, just had to get past that big red fella, and this one, it was getting to the point where it's like, we've tried all the beers, until I saw that big yellow light for aeroplane mode. Yep, 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 but, APA, Acolyte Protection Agency. <laughs> yes, Session APA. I still haven't looked up to see what that means. We can't put that side of away like it's nothing. And here I am, being a shite bag. And then on our way out, I would just assumed we were heading home. Turns out we were heading into the second fiddle. And fair enough, they did have one more beer that I hadn't tried yet, and it was Five Lamps Red Ale. You can see my face. I'm not amused. He is very much amused. But cool live music and a great looking bar, so I couldn't complain that much. It was unfortunate that the beer wasn't up to mark. Uh, this was like an ice cold red ale and compared to uh, the cask one I had earlier that night, it paled in comparison. So here's me drinking my last beer. I've made it this far into the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, do the usual, please feel free to like and leave a comment if you've enjoyed this beer journey. Good night.